Folks, welcome to Metalwani and Metal Nation Radio. With us today, we have the dramatic Hannes Grossman from Alkaloid. Welcome to the show, sir. Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, great to have me here. Awesome. Now, Alkaloid, where do I start from? I mean, the highly anticipated debut album, The Malkut Grimoire, is finally out. The fans have got a taste of it. So you must have received some great response. So what has been the response so far from your amazing fans? Well, actually, um, both uh, the response of fans and press have, has been overwhelming so far. Mm-hmm. Um, the album was crowdfunded, um, right. so we, uh, the music was ready in, I don't know, mid-February, and we sent it out immediately to the crowdfunders. Okay. And um, officially, the album was released last week. Right. But only on a website. Um, through distribution, it will be released in like world worldwide in May. Mm-hmm. But you can um, also order it from our uh, store and and get it online um, on uh, you know MP3 downloads and flag downloads, right. all of that. So it has been very very busy. Um, so now we're just starting to get like reviews and 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 really like feedback because mm-hmm. we. I have no idea um, <laughs> what people will think about it. Right. It's it's quite um, um, yeah difficult, difficult music, and it's um, it's very complex as always, and uh, pretty dark. And um, we thought like it could be a little too much for some people. Yeah. I um, but uh, so far, like. All the re- reviews I got is like I, I think the worst was eight point five out of ten. <laughs> okay, that's not like, the worst, isn't it? The worst. All the other are way better. Uh, right. That's. Uh, I didn't expect that to be honest. Yeah, I I totally understand that because the other band use sounds from different genres and call the music fusion, but Alkaloid uses influences from various genres. Uh, but it's subtle and enhances the music. How are these two different, in your opinion? Um, well, I, I, um, I can, it, it's very, um, well, not difficult, but very dangerous to mix different styles. Right. Because what, what many bands do, or what some bands do at least, is uh, take um, very superficial elements from different styles and blend them together. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that's that's um that makes sense you know um, right. it would be like playing death metal and use a blast beat and then have a swing pattern <laughs> <laughs> right because it wouldn't work and and um, some bands are writing like that if they try to mix styles but it's not about mixing um you know styles that necessarily don't get together um it's it's more of i mean our style is is just um very diverse, right? I would say, and um, that album pretty much defines a style. I mean, there's every song is kind of different from from each other, and that's True. that's part of our of of what we wanted to do. So, um, so uh, we wa- didn't want to limit ourselves to mm-hmm. one particular style, or um, say we play prog rock and death metal and just mix it together like. You know, have keyboards and and some death growls, and we don't want to do that. We wanted to make something of our own, and um, um, so in the end, it's not so important where where the ideas come from or where right. they come from. It's um, our style consists of different uh, material. Like the title track of the of the album is a hundred percent death metal song. Yeah, there's nothing else in this song, and then there's other songs where which are not so much of, of the, the death metal. Yeah, it's got, it's it's mix of everything, and it kind of is very surprising as has that that element of surprise. You know, you won't you won't be able to figure out what's coming next. So it it's got that. Okay, now this like generally the songs are like nine minutes long, yeah. and and if they're longer, I mean even the 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 organism is around eight and a half minutes, yeah. and the last one funeral for a continent is around twelve and a half minutes. So it's that. You know, there's no repetitiveness. There's no uh, monotonous feeling when somebody listens to it. So I really wonder how you guys, because as far as what I know, you guys wrote these songs individually. 
So how did you guys fuse them together into one, you know, one compact uh, piece? Well, that's uh, actually, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't even remember where the ideas, uh, where we got the ideas from. And um, it's it's um, it's a process. It it takes a while to to compose these songs and right. um, to mix them together. Um, but it should be organic songwriting. It's not like we we sit down or somebody of us sits down and says like I want to write something that sounds like uh uh you know mm -hmm. like in a band or that's, we never done that. It's just when you the style mix actually um well it's it's not so much a, as I said not so much a mixed style. It's our style and right. since we listen to and we've played all in different bands and. Um, we played a lot of different music and grew up with a lot of different music and and this is quite natural actually it would be me for me it would be kind of um kind of strange to just use one particular sound like right one particular guitar sound just one particular kind of groove um why should i should i do that because i have so many influences so um to um, to organize a song naturally and to move from one part into another that might be contradictive. To me, they, they are not contradictive. Mm -hmm. um, I try to resolve it by just thinking about it naturally, like if I would write a rock song or, you know, it's not so different. Um, and what I wanted to say about the length of the songs, yes, um, the album is 73 minutes long. It's long, right. <laughs> and uh, some of the songs are really long. But on the other hand, it's like, and what you said about the element of surprise, it's it's about it's like a book or a movie. It's the same thing. Um, yeah. If if you know, like if you if you uh, watch a crime movie and you know after the first ten minutes um, who committed the crime, then it's gonna be pretty boring. Boring, right? That's what I try to avoid. That you all, yeah. It's it's not. It's also not very. Well, how can I put it? Hit music. It's not really hit music, I would say. It's not pop music. Um, it, it takes its time to grow. I mean, the moment you listen to it. I remember listening to the first demo, which came out, Garden Phrases. And I, for me, it was like, this has to be the song written by Hannes. Because when I listened to your solo album, The Radical, I could clearly figure out that it's you. It's definitely you. And I was wondering whether you wrote all the lyrics or does Morian is also part of it? Um, no, I wrote a, um, three, three, for three songs I wrote lyrics only because uh, Morian was uh, short in time. Okay. Um, you know, he's a classical composer mm -hmm. who lives in Holland and um, that's his um, main work and uh, he's very committed to that, of course, and it's taking a lot of work, of course, to write music for orchestras and, of course, he has a lot of deadlines, but right. also a deadline in the studio. So he, he said, like, hey... Honest, could you help me out with some lyrics? Because um, it's also um, a matter of inspiration. I mean, his lyrics are fantastic, to me at least. Mm -hmm. And I, I really like them. And I I didn't know if I can actually come up with something that in interesting. Right. He's, he's re really a writer in that sense. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it turned out to be pretty good. So um, like, I, I'm quite satisfied. Satisfied. With Lyrics, um, it's I feel more secure when writing music, of course, because yeah. that's what I normally do. Uh, but um, <clears throat> I don't have to li write lyrics, let's put it this way. Yeah, um, yeah, I totally understand that. Now, the songs on the album are basically written for three guitars, and, and you said that they're written in such a way that Morian can play his part and also sing. So yeah. how was that? You know, working with with Christian, of course. You know, you have a, a very good history with Christian. So, his vocal dystonia affected the way of songs are composed, or has he fully recovered? Um, I don't think it's completely covered. Um, he's he gets like injections and stuff, mm -hmm. um, and treatment, and he's working on that. But uh, well, I, at least what I can say is, I mean, I recorded the album uh, at my studio, and right. um. um yeah, well, what can I say? I didn't really <laughs> notice anything, you know. Mm -hmm. but, um, at a certain point, like after recording, like for five, six hours, he said, like he's got problems and um, got a little stressed yeah. by that. 
But I couldn't tell because it sounded just fine. Um, he found a way to work around that mm-hmm. perfect. And um, to me, that's some of also on the album. There's some of his most spectacular solo work, like right. guitar work. And uh, so, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's quite amazing. Like I remember when he when he found out that he has vocal dystonia because he had troubles with his hand um, some time before that. He didn't know what it was. When he found out, he really yeah, was afraid that he has to stop playing guitar because right. that's what happened to other people who, mostly violin players, have vocal dystonia. Mm-hmm. Um, from yeah, I don't know, um, practicing a lot and um, yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't feel For like you know. But, yeah, but he worked around it so far, and um, I think, um, and he's busier than ever. That's the, <laughs> that's the thing. Like he's writing for his own it's project, this, right? Solo it's album. Impressive. Absolutely right. Now, from a hardened mechanist, is is something which I feel is is probably the most challenging song from the album to play live. Would you agree with that? Mm, well, not to me. I don't think so. It's uh, <laughs> it's um, very um, similar to um, to let's say Omnivium by Obscura. Uh-huh. Because um, on on that album, I wrote a lot um, of the music. And um, actually, that from a Hadron Mach- Machinist was, um, I planned it to be a part of the next Obscura record. But so okay. apparently, I don't play with Obscura, but I didn't want to, you know, um, throw that song away. Right. Sounds uh, good. So um, yeah, it is. Um, it is very common ground for me <laughs> <laughs> because it's it's that uh, Obscura drumming style. I don't know about guitars. Um, but I think we played more difficult stuff before. And I think on the album there's more difficult stuff. I would say like that um, Alter Magnitudes is mm-hmm. much more difficult to play. Yes. I would say. Yeah, short song, three minute song, I, difficult. It's pretty, pretty intense. Right, right. That's awesome. Now, you guys compose stuff individually and you share it with each other through the net. In your opinion, what are the advantages and disadvantages of this compared to the traditional method of writing songs together? Um, well, um, actually, I'm not sure if it has any advantage. <laughs> um, it's always better to get together and work on stuff. True. Uh, I think so. But at least maybe there's one advantage that, or let's say one side effect that is positive. Okay. <laughs> that you have to, um, when you present your ideas to others, you have, it has to be in a state where they, where it's, not completely finished, but where you have worked on it quite a lot. Because if you present your first idea, that doesn't really make sense. Mm-hmm. You know, working online or you know, doing a notation. So um, you really have to work focused and and write it down. And that's the good thing. Like when you go to the rehearsal room and just play and um, with the other musicians, it's different when you write down your ideas on a note sheet. Right. Um, and I think it's way better because you see it in front of your eyes. Mm-hmm. You see the structure and you see especially the weakness in, in the song structure when right. you write it down. And it's different like just writing down part A, part B, then part A again. No, if you write note by note everything down, then um, that's a huge advantage in terms of songwriting, especially when you make um, music that is uh, complex. Right, right, absolutely true. You guys perform di- different jobs from the band. For instance, like the uh, the Linus is the social media guy, if I'm not mistaken. So, w- what are the roles of the other members, like you, you know, Morian, or even Christian? Um, well, um, Linus is handling um, the website and and all of that, just because he's um, studied I- IT and uh, he's a programmer, and okay. that's all. That's also a part of, of his job. Like um, in you know, apart from the band, he's mm-hmm. very funny with IT stuff. So, so he's an IT guy like me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's the only guy in the band who actually can do that. So um, I don't even have a smartphone. That's probably um, why I forgot so many days. <laughs> All right. But, yeah. The point is, um, um, he's the only one who can do that. Um, but everybody is doing stuff for the band, and right. because, I mean, we're in a very early state. Let's put it this way, and um, um, 
the next big thing would be playing live. live. So. Yeah, I just wanted to know when is that going to happen? Any such plans of playing? Because, man, when this material will be unleashed live with all of you on stage, it's going to be a chaos. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> is it not going to happen at all? Um, you mean chaos? <laughs> no, no, I mean the gig. I know, of course, the chaos just, is going to happen. The chaos. Um, well, um, playing live. Uh, we definitely want to play live. We have not a con you know a, a particular show booked or something like that mm -hmm. but we're working on that it's like when we are we're all doing it by ourselves like we're it's self released and when before that we did the crowdfunding campaign right. and all of that and um it's a lot of work so yeah. um now when the album is released and i've sent like i get like um i don't know many many <laughs> orders every day which i have to send out manually so when that is a little bit dropping down yeah. and there's more time to just um, book shows or get in touch with booking agency because we don't want to do that ourselves. Right, right. I understand that. And now, you know, because it's so much work and um, and a booking agency definitely could could um, do a better job. Right. Uh, but it's going to happen for sure. Um, um, that's what we plan on. Um, and on stage, I think um, since we have three guitarists, that's maybe the challenge for the sound engineer. Right. But not because it makes life easier, because um, um, because we can um, divide all the parts for mm -hmm. three guitarists, and um, that leaves some more room. And I think the songs, after all, are less yes. stressful to play like compared to Obscura, because <laughs> um, it's not fast all the time, and it's not all the time blast beats and um and there are also like chords that just you know go on for several several measures and right, all. Right. so um um the advantage in that band is that everybody is a really really good live performer right um, we i mean everybody has done touring like extensive touring absolutely in the, the band so we know the game and um, I have to say, I'm, I'm not speaking for myself, but for the other guys, I can say that that um, they are incredible musicians, and um, and I never worked with um, with a band like this, like on the level. I mean, I play in Blooded Science, which is a, a <laughs> you know with Alex Webster and Ron Charles, yeah, they right. insane musicians, but we don't play live. So True. so. Uh, I know, but I know for a fact that um, Alkaloid is definitely will be definitely the best sounding live band awesome. that I've been part of because just simply because everybody um, plays his stuff um, perfectly. Yeah, precise. And, yeah, in terms of preciseness and all of that, that was maybe sometimes a, an issue in Oscura, mm -hmm. um, getting those songs like really um, top notch, but. Um, in Alkaloid, I don't see a reason why it should should be messy or chaotic. It <laughs> work very, very well. Awesome, awesome. So, so talking about blotted signs, when is it expected to come out with a new material? And I heard for updates from Ron and Alex that you know you guys are working. So what's happening? Yeah, um, Ron um, finished his writing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, now uh, for the next album, everybody um, contributed material. Um, which is a cool thing, because we used um, Ron's um, Ron's writing system, which is a t kind of twelve-tone writing system where you have to go by certain rules and extend, um, you know, um, the notes. Just use a certain array of notes and so on. So it would be um, uh, there's not enough time to explain all of that because okay. it's really really uh, difficult. But anyways. Um, that was very challenging, but everybody um, contributed um, songs. And Ron has um, finished his songs, and he wrote four pretty long songs mm -hmm. um, that are um, very, very complex, I must say. Okay. Uh, but it's, it's very surprising. It's, it's a bit different from, from... Previous stuff. From the previous stuff, but mm -hmm. um, you can immediately re recognize, recognize that it's Immediately, like it's it's this kind of, of sound. Right, right. So has it been recorded, or it's just the writing uh, process? Just I, well, I'm, we're par um, recording it in parts. The good thing is that I own a studio, so right. I can go on and off. Uh, like 
my my drum set is in the studio and it's mic'd. So I recorded one song like a month ago, and I'm going to record another soon when when there's like a gap in my schedule. Right. And, and so on. And I mean, the for me the challenge most challenging songs are the one Ron Charles and Back Road because he's first of all uh, more specific than I am with um, with rhythm and um, rhythm orchestration. He's he's very particular mm-hmm. in what he wants to hear for his songs and all his ideas go uh, by a really, really, um, let's say, st- well-structured rhythmic pattern. True. So, um, and of course, it's um, it's a lot of, of, let's say, quintuplet stuff and all of that. So, very technical stuff. Technical <laughs> stuff, as always. And to me, my my own songs are easier to play because I wrote. Them. <laughs> yeah, you wrote them. That's that. That's true. Now, that's cool. Now, now, you and Christian knew Sebastian and Tom Fontenet well before they joined Obscura. So, you know, uh, from your personal journey with Obscura, what are your expectations from the new Obscura album? Uh, I don't know. Um, um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm quite curious um, what it will sound, sound like. Um, I, I, honestly, I don't know what to expect. It's, for me, it's a little uh, difficult to to imagine mm-hmm. that because, um, well, uh, well, let's put it this way: I've been um, pretty much for the last two albums, pretty much the main songwriter. Songwriter, yeah, I'm aware it's, of that. Um, it's, uh, I don't know what they will come up with. I hopefully with something substantial. Mm-hmm. It should be no problem. Like they have good new musicians. Yeah, and and um, um, well, and, and I hopefully with something unique. Mm-hmm. That's what I hope. Like um, I had the feeling, and that's what was also like partly because I left. I had the the idea, um, the feeling that it's going into a certain direction. Um, you know that it has to go in a certain direction. That it has to contain like you know this typical kind of riffing, and you know. That it's a little stuck in one particular style. Okay. And I don't know. I don't hope so. I think I hope it will be something um, unique and something substantial that sounds like something new, um, and not just like the, um, you know, what's already been done in the past. Yeah, exactly. Because that would be boring, and that would be against uh, what the band stands for, actually, or stood for. <laughs> I don't know what they stand for right now. Um, maybe alkaloid stands for for that constant progress and development now. The, um, this is your main band now, alkaloid. When if I look at, I mean, for you, of course, with your solo yeah. and then with the blotted signs. But this is the main band. And I'm sure you have certain plans in your future to to extend it and work on the the you know the second album and play it live. So I'm sure even other guys would agree with you on that. Yeah, I have like uh, six songs or seven songs finished for <laughs> second album. Wow. Well, it, or let's say I had some some leftovers uh, that I worked on a little more, and now they're really good. Um, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I don't want to use leftover songs that yeah. I felt like are not worthy or not as good as the previous material. But that's the thing. Like, when you have ideas, sometimes you just need to sit down and work on it and trust. Mm. Work on it and rewrite it and so on and then they turn into something you wouldn't have expected, and that was pretty much the case with some of the songs. And then I have had like two or three rough uh, ideas, ideas uh, mm-hmm. but this time I want to work with the with the other guys in the band like for real, you know? Right. <laughs> and and discuss the parts and go over it and because I I always feel like when they after they contributed, like after the other guys contributed to my songs, they became much better. Mm-hmm. Um, like just because, um, I mean, I can, you know, that's the thing. For example, I can write a bass line. I know how to write a bass line. Maybe also how to know, I, I know how to write a good bass line. But right. I certainly am not a bass player. But Linus is a bass player. He can write better bass true, line, true. you know. And that's the thing. Um, and so on. And um, sometimes it just uh, takes the view of other people to get s- something that you wouldn't have expected. And um, that's something what I search for. And that's kind of the magic. Um, 
that that the, why I like working in a band. Um, you know, the solo album. This that was more like a, you know, I just did that. Well, I don't know if I want to talk about that, but um, I just did that to get those songs out finally because um, okay. my solo album should be now I can't say it that I, I'm not a part of the band anymore but um, the solo album should be like all the songs should be on the next Obscura album Okay. But apparently I found out that one member had a problem that I write so much mm-hmm. which I can understand um, so I just um, really recorded those songs myself and released it as a solo album so that they are out of the way um, Not just that, but also the reason that when you knew that the songs you've written for the next Obscure album are actually really good, so why would you want to waste them? So cherish them some more, chisel out the rough edges and make them into a solo album. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, um, and that's the point. So um, I wouldn't work as a solo artist. Um, I just, I could have made a, up a band name, but at, at this point I thought like, Hey, it's just me. Why? Yeah, why would you want to have my name? It's it's my name. So, and I didn't even write it on the cover because it's you know. Yeah, <laughs> I understand yeah. that. I'm one of those guys who's covered up in symbols and nobody sees you on stage. <laughs> it's for purpose. I'm not a front guy. I don't like that. Right. <laughs> so, um, yeah. That's the point. So so, but um, it's it's not uh, that I want to push my own name. Right, right. I don't want to work with, with in a band with other people. And since I'm not, um, I you know I don't, I don't sit at home wait and wait for, for the big gig. Like mm-hmm. I don't know, I I don't wait for let's say, hmm, uh, testament to call me. If yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I rather um, form own bands with people I like and people that I know are great. So um, self satisfaction the- for you as a musician. Exactly. Right. What is right. You working with Christians for the next solo album? Well, um, I don't know if I'm. Yeah, if I can say that, but yeah, why not? Actually, the solo album. He's planning on making one with a real singer. Okay. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, he did discuss uh, that with me. Oh yeah, he did already. So I can talk about that. It's cool. Oh cool. Uh, and, and, I, and, I, and I want you guys to have Jimmy Pitts, man. I mean, he's a very good friend of mine, and his solos kick yes. ass. He's a killer player. Um, I, I think I think he's gonna play on the album, but I I, I don't know for hundred percent. So I hope so at least. Right. Um, know that the the singer. I'm, I I don't know if I should um, uh, say any names because there's no press release to mm-hmm. it. Now, but that's really killer yeah. singer. He, he's of course gonna make an announcement very soon, so we can wait for that. Let's have a element of surprise in this as well. But but he um, yeah, I'm playing on that album. Um, which is great, and it's always fun to play on his stuff. Um, just because um, it's it's fun to play on his songs because they um, they're well written and it's uh, it's it's total power metal stuff like this heavy heavy metal kind of painkiller vibe. Right. And that's really fun for me to do, and uh, that's some that's music I actually like, like a lot. to play. Absolutely, Hannes. So before I conclude the interview, how about you? define the new album, the Malkut Grimoire, in your own style, in just one sentence. Oh, ooh, phew, in one sentence. Uh, <laughs> how do you do that? Um, um, it, it, you know, maybe you found out that I talk a lot when you ask. <laughs> not really, not really, just that, you know, because one when sentence. somebody goes in depth of an answer, I mean, you always <laughs> go in depth, so it's, it's a great feeling when somebody goes in depth, and that's where the, the 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 puzzle arises that how would how would Hannes put it in just one sentence? Let me check out. Um, um, let me let me think. Uh, um, um, it's it's everything um, that you would expect but it's also the opposite from that <laughs> so you are again throwing the cards you're throwing the puzzle yeah. for fans to figure out if you like let's put it this way if you like the previous stuff you're gonna love it as everybody says so but it's completely different so something different which fans have not heard in the past yeah i think i think um i think there's a lot of different stuff on that album um it starts like with the sound is um, well not too different, but it's 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 a way different guitar sound than an obscura, for right, instance. 
Right. And, and there's like a kind of, let's say, darkness or heaviness that's that's different, you know. It's quite like as I said, like the title track. It's it's probably the most brutal song I ever played on. Wow. I would say so. It's it's straight, straight. Of death, straight for death, death, death metal assault. Yeah, and um, but then there's a song like Dyson Sphere that yeah is something like very very different from. I think, I, you know, if you say something like that, it 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 it, it might sound also a little arrogant. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Some people take it in that way. On a low level, but I don't think that a song like Dyson Sphere has been ever done ever by any band. It's um it's a 15 minute piece that Big goes piece. in circular right. style, and actually not only circular in a in a in terms of of uh, structure. Mm -hmm. Really, um, Morian draw a circle and calculated how long every riff has to be. Con um, <laughs> you know, according to this, so he, he was drawing with um with his hand, and um, it's really calculated. And uh, the music he's been using is a mix of modern classical music, death metal, and reggae. Wow. So, um, I don't know. That's something we've never done before. I've never done before. And it, it was weird, like, playing those reggae grooves, and then the next uh, part was, like, a Morbid Angel double bass part. And then again, and then back to the reggae groove. So that was weird, you know. Awesome, awesome, Hannes. Like that before. And, and that's... Um, so there's really um, some stuff you you haven't heard by yeah. us, and then there's familiar stuff like Alter Magnitudes and some of the other stuff. Right. So wow. I think uh, you're gonna be satisfied. Like everyone who's who was into our previous stuff will be satisfied with the album at least. Right, right. Fantastic, Hannes Crossman. Always an honor having a chat with you and actually an in-depth chat. So thank you very much for for the time. Thank you too. Thanks for having me.